This is a bowfin, grinnel, dogfish, cyber trout, cottonfish, shoe pick, known by very, very many names. This is a nice specimen. It don't have the black spot on the tail. Some do. And this is a very healthy one right here. We're going to show you how to clean it. One thing you need to do is keep it alive till you get to where you're going because the meat is very soft. So if you want to pause that for a minute. So the first thing you want to do is you want to bleed it. Now you can knock it upside the head to kill it if you want to do that but I'm not personally going to do that. But when you look at a bowfin, you'll see a fine line that goes down his side. And that's his backbone. And you want to stick him right there in that backbone. And when you do, he's going to flop. Just like that. And you're going to get that blood out. You want squeezing and squeezing. And this takes a little bit of time, but you want the gills to be a lighter color than that. And we're going to pause it while I finish bleeding to the next step. Okay. So you just want to take it and rub him just like this. And you can tell all that blood is coming out. You want most of the blood out. That's what gives it this rough taste. A lot of people don't eat them because they got supposedly a rough taste. But when you do all this procedure, it comes out very good. And sometimes you might want to open it up a little bit more. Dig around in there. Get circulating of blood. And as you can tell... The gills are lighter than they were. The more and more you get out, the better it is. So the blood is almost out. You'll have a little bit left, but not much. I use newspaper. Kind of wipe it down because there are slimy fish. So I think we're pretty good on the blood. I will stick it one more time. Kind of wiggle it in there. Get that hole open. And get a little bit more out. This process, everything usually takes about 20 minutes per fish. So if you got several, you are got a lot of work to do. Let me get a close up on them gills for them. And see the gills are real light color now on both sides. So the next step, you want to grab the newspaper to hold it. And you want to take a sharp knife. This method of cleaning has basically been handed down to me by my my dad and I have never veered from this method so basically what you want to do is take your knife and you want to saw 
the skin off. Supposedly there's several layers of skin. You're taking layers off with the scales. You're leaving the layer on because the meat is real soft. So you want to just watch your hand. Watch it because it will flex. The fish will flex. And it is very important to have a sharp, sturdy knife to do this. And you want to go all the way up to the hard part of the gill plate. And you just come up like that. And that is one layer of scales. And then you repeat the method across the top. Just like so. All the way to the top of his head. It comes up just like that. And then the same way on the bottom. This is where he will kick a lot because it's very, I guess, ticklish. Don't worry about that little fin right there. Just go around it. And also this is the wiggly part because he's wiggly. Which you won't go. If you get into the meat like that, that's fine. Occasionally you'll do that. Now, you want to flip him over. And you want to do the same process on this side. Starting down there towards the tail. Or if you wait. And basically you're you're pushing down and pushing up at the same time. To where your knife glides through here pretty decent and again a sharp knife knife is the best fillet knives are usually too limber for this job and that is perfect you then go across the bottom so, again, don't worry about that fin. Come around that fin. And I usually get my finger once or twice through this whole process. But so far, so good. You can grab him right in there. Because you want all that meat right there. Just like that. You can clean him up like that. Just like that. Go underneath that pin just like that. You got some more little scales right here. Just take your knife and just pull it across like that. And now it's a vice for that. Just like that. And then this little spot right here, you want to just get it just like that right there, which will be fine. Okay. Now you can tell it's bleeding a little bit more, so you can take and squeeze him a little more while you got him to this point. do that top area here just like this now I'm gonna pause it real quick and I'm gonna go get my other two tools that we will need to finish this delicacy and hopefully it don't go nowhere while I'm gone The next tools you want to have is a good small sharp knife and a pair of skinning pliers for catfish. Now, one thing I also want to mention, and I hadn't mentioned, is this thing is full of teeth. And you don't want to get in there. That is very bad business. That is very sharp. And so that's the reason why I hold his head and I use paper to hold him. Because he's very aggressive. 
We'll squeeze him a little bit more. All right, now, the next thing you want to do is, besides make a mess on the ground, you want to take your big knife and you want to go right underneath that there. And I'll go up in there just like that. And you want to go very carefully because you don't want to bust certain inners in this fish. Because if you do, it, it's got a green tint to it and it will not taste very good. So I just be very careful, work my way. All that is good meat, just like that. See, you've broken it through. There's your innards there, okay? And there's your innards, and there's a what they call bitter gall back, at, back in there. That is bad business if you do bust it on your meat. So basically, you want to come in there just like that, and you just hear that bone crack, and come right across the top, like that. Go a little ways deep, grab him just like that, and snap, and pull his guts out, just like that. And there's that green bitter gall right there. That will make a fish taste really bad. A lot of species of fish has them, and it will make fish taste very nasty. All right, so now the next thing you wanna do, you got that out of your way, is you wanna go down here to, to where the belly button is, I call it, and you wanna cut that out with your sharp knife, just like so. All right. And it's fine if it goes in. We're going to clean this up. And then you're going to take your sharp knife and you're going to go right down the middle. Just like so. Okay. And then you can cut, finish cutting that off. And that comes right out. Just like that. This is caviar or roe. It's not developed 100%, but in, in Louisiana, this is very high delicacy right there. I have never had it myself, but they say it's highly praised in Louisiana. I've never had it myself. Now, at this point, you want to get a water hose and clean it up a little bit. So, I'm going to pause... All right, you want to wrench him off really good. You want to get all that blood off right here. Even though you bleed it really good, you still going to have some blood, but not a lot. Sometimes you can take and squeeze a little bit more, which is fine. And I usually do on these big ones. The big ones. How big is this fish? This one is this one measured out 27 inches. So this is a fair size bowfin. And that is all meat. Okay. So you got her hosed off. And we're gonna get new newspaper kind of clean your work area up a little bit just like so okay so now you got all this right here the next thing you want to do is take your sharp knife and you want to come on back right beside that fin there and you want to dig all that black out and you can go underneath it just like that and you can come down here go. so we cut that incision there 
you want to get all this black out. So what you want to do is take your sharp knife and just go right underneath that skin, just like this. And go down both sides. Just like so. Now, once you get that away, you can take, come over to your water, you can go ahead and pull it, pull it out with your knife like so. Get it loose. And hose it out again. Show me to hold the hose, please. Take your fingers, scrape it out, just like so. And that'll be good, just like that. We'll finish it up. We're just going to dress it up a little bit, kind of scrape stuff out. Okay, now, then you're going to take it, and you're going to set it just like that right there. What you're doing, you're taking this pin out here, you're going to go down, just a little ways, not very far. And you just want to go right down that side, just like so. You don't go have to go very deep, just maybe a half an inch. And then you want to come around like that and come down on that side. Just like so. Grab it, you can pull up on it, just like that. Now, you can take these skinning pliers, you can grab it, just like so. Make sure it's cut all the way right here. Grab it. And what that does, it gets all that bone out of there. All that bone and fat comes right out just like that. And that's all good, clean meat right there. And that is your fin. And then the next thing, take your big knife. And you just want to come right down, around the tail. And there's your tail. Now, the next thing you do, you want to lay him just like that. And what I do is I come in right here. There's your top. There's your backbone there. You want to come right on top of that backbone. Come down that hole you just cut. And you want, you're, you're going right up against that rib cage right there. And basically, you're filleting it out. And as you can tell, this meat is very clean looking. And you want to come right against that backbone all the way down, just like so. And there is one side of both ends. That is a big hunk of meat. And this will be cleaned up a little bit more. Um, and I'll show you that. But you got this one big old hunk. And then 
what you want to do is take your knife and come right here right underneath right there and you just want to break them ribs just like this all you're doing is breaking the rib see how that's breaking the rib it's always good to have a good sharp knife now when you got them ribs right then you want to come back on the top and you can tell right in there that's where the backbone is right there you just want to go right underneath that back just like that you're not going to lose a lot of meat on that backbone and it's good to and see you got that thing peeled up like that and you just work your knife just like so you're not going to lose a lot of meat on this bigger fish but you want to keep it as close as the backbone as you can basically you're doing a backwards fillet and you can just cut that right off right there that's where you stuck it and all this is trash so all that is meat and then what you want to do is check the top everything looks good that that that'll be fine if you want to you can cut that out just like that and then you want to cut this out that's your bottom fin just like that there you've got one solid piece of meat I almost messed up and then you take the other side and do the same you want to cut a little bit of that blood out a little bit of that uh, fat out and that'll be fine cut that fat out right there and then do the same thing on this side where that fin was at cut that fin out so basically when you get to this point you can take and clean it with some water just you know white basically washing it off and then you can tell the ribs they're all solid one do you want to finish in the house on your cutting board yes so we're going to pause at this point and then i'm going to show you how to cut it in steaks go okay so i got one fillet here you want to take cold water like i said wrench it off and you just want to kind of clean it up real good just like that this meat is it's not soft right now but it will uh, take water so you don't, you want to do less water as possible on these fish and then also when you put it in a bag you want to put it in a bag to where it's separate the pieces are separate and you want to air thaw them out to where when you thaw it out it don't absorb water So basically, you want to take, and what I do is I go right down behind there, just like so. Switch sides. And that way, this is considered the rib part. The ribs are right there. And then you got this other piece here. 
and I usually cut it about right there, make it magical eating bites. So all this up here on top is completely boneless. So on one big bow fin, you'll have all this will be boneless. And then this will have a bone here, and this will be all non-bones, but I usually just cut them just like that. So that is one side of the bow fan. And then you want to do the next piece the same way. Rinse it off. Like so. And then do the same thing. Come right down on top of there. Come around just like that. And there's your rib area. And that is all meat, no bones. And that is how you prepare a bow fin. And we do a bake fry because of the fact we have found out we do a bake fry because we have found out that this meat is so soft when you fry it in grease it soaks up the grease but if you do a bake fry there's no grease involved basically you put your fillets in an egg batter and then you put your batter on like you're going to fry them and then you lay them in a baking pan with parchment paper at 425 and then you spray the top only of your fillets and you put them in the oven for 15 20 minutes then you check them and flip them another 15 20 minutes and then you have a good batch of fish and that is the end of this video and hopefully i have made it very understandable